you're about to learn a great higher level probability trick that the vast majority of students don't know how to do. It comes up occasionally at the higher level of the GMAT and the GRE, and it's to do with guaranteeing an outcome. Usually that word guarantee will be in the question or a synonym for the word guarantee. And let's look at this question as a first example, and then we'll do a harder example afterwards. This is the type of question that you might get. There are 12 men and 15 women auditioning for a role. Four of the men and five of the women are suitable for the role. What is the least number of auditions that must occur to guarantee that at least two people are auditioned who are suitable for the role? As I say, quite a rare question type seen only at the higher ends of the GMAT and the GRE. And as with all of my questions, please feel free to pause the video, think about what you would do first and see if it aligns with my recommendations and my trick. What we have to do to guarantee an outcome is think of the worst case scenario, think of the absolute worst case scenario that could happen, and then add on to that the number of desired people that we want or desired objects, whatever the question is. I'll illustrate this in a second, but the logic is this. To guarantee an outcome, it means it has to work even in the worst possible circumstances. So we think of the worst possible scenario and then just add on to that however many we need. Let's take this situation with the auditions. Imagine that we get super unlucky with the people we audition and we audition all the people who are unsuitable first. How many men would that be? That would be eight men. Remember, there are 12 men in total and four of them are suitable. That leaves eight unsuitable men. So let's imagine we audition those eight unsuitable men only, none of the suitable ones. What about the women? There are 10 unsuitable women. So far, what's happened? We have auditioned 18 unsuitable people and we still haven't got a single suitable person for the role. This is what I mean by the worst case scenario. We have auditioned 18 people and we haven't got a single suitable person. But notice something. The next person that we audition must be suitable. Because we did the worst case scenario, we have run out of all the bad outcomes. There are no unsuitable people left. There are only suitable people. So all we need to do is audition two more people and that guarantees that we get two people who are suitable for the role. So 10 plus eight, that's 18 unsuitable people, plus two further auditions. And with 20 auditions, we can guarantee that we have at least two people who are suitable for the role. Now you might be thinking, well, it's much more likely that we get it way before we audition 20 people. Of course, you could just audition two people and then those two people are suitable if you get lucky, and then you're done. So the minimum would be like two. But they're talking about guaranteeing an outcome. How many people do we have to audition to guarantee that we have two suitable people? And when we're talking about guarantees, we have to think about the worst case scenario. That's why it's quite hard to guarantee someone in real life, right? Because what happens if the worst case scenario happens and your train runs late or whatever? Well, same thing here. To guarantee something, you've got to think about the worst case scenario. And here, the worst case scenario is auditioning the 18 unsuitable people. And once we've done that, we would have to audition a two further people to guarantee that we have at least two. In other words, it's impossible if we audition 20 people for there not to be at least two people who are suitable for the role. That's the logic. I hope it makes sense. And we're going to use that logic now for a harder level example in the next question. As always, please do pause the video, try it out yourself, see what you get. This is obviously a harder one, but we're going to use the same methodology essentially. Worst case scenario plus desired. Okay, let's take a look at this one. There are eight green marbles, 18 red marbles, 17 blue marbles, 21 purple marbles, and five silver marbles in a bag. It's a big bag, right? If a certain number of marbles are going to be removed at random, 
What is the least possible number of marbles that must be removed to guarantee that at least 10 marbles of any one color have been removed? Actually, that reminds me of something I didn't say for the last question. Notice the wording, what is the least possible number of marbles? Or in the last question, what is the least possible number of auditions? Because of course, if we audition 21 people or 22 people, we're still guaranteed to get two. But the least possible will be 20. With 20 auditions, we guarantee. So we want the same thing here. Of course, if we took out, I don't know, 100 marbles, that would guarantee at least 10 marbles of one type. But we want the least possible. Okay, let's use the same logic. What is the worst case scenario here? Remember, we're aiming for at least 10 marbles of one particular color. The worst case scenario is that we start off with eight green marbles. Because remember, we can't get 10 green marbles because there are only eight green marbles in total. Now, it doesn't matter which color we start with here, but I hope you'd agree that if we picked out eight green marbles, that's part of the worst case scenario because we're aiming for 10 of any one color. So those greens are useless. What's the worst case scenario with reds? The worst case scenario with reds would be nine red marbles. Because remember, we're aiming for at least 10. So a terrible outcome is to get nine. What about blue? Again, nine. There are 17, but if we only have nine, we still don't have 10 marbles of any one color. What's the worst case scenario with purple? That would be nine again. And the worst case scenario with silver would be five. This is a key moment. Can you see that the numbers we've got on screen at the moment represent the worst case scenario? We've picked out so many marbles and we still don't have 10 of one color. In fact, we've picked out as many marbles as we possibly can and still avoided having 10 of any one color. Picked out eight green, nine red, nine blue, nine purple, five silver, and we still don't have 10 of one color. So that represents the worst case scenario. Just like in the last question, picking those 18 unsuitable men and women was the worst case scenario there. Here, picking this number, whatever it is, adding these up, that's 40. Picking these 40 marbles is the worst case scenario. Imagine you're sitting there and you're picking out marbles and this is the result. You would put your hands on your head and you'd be like, it couldn't have gone any worse. I couldn't have picked any worse marbles because I'm aiming for 10 of one color. And what do we do once we've got that worst case scenario? We add in now, finally, to guarantee an outcome, what's desired? Well, what is desired? They want 10 of any one color. So just one further marble, what would it have to be? We've run out of greens, run out of silvers. So it'd have to be a red, blue, or purple. And whichever one of those colors it was, we would then have 10 of that color. So we would have hit that desired outcome. So with one further marble, we can now guarantee that we've got 10 of any one color. To be clear, the worst case scenario were those 40 marbles where we didn't have 10 of one color. And then we just add in one because that would guarantee having 10 of reds, blues, or purples. Exact same method as last question. Worst case scenario, and then you just add in what you want. In the last question, it was two people who are suitable. In this question, it was one further marble to hit 10 of one color. Fairly advanced question, I think you'd agree. And as I say, it only tends to appear at the higher levels, but I want this channel to have a mixture of fairly straightforward questions and the higher end questions. I know some students, even after this explanation, will still find it a bit difficult, but I hope this video has given you at least a chance to get these kind of difficult level questions right. If you learn anything at all, please do leave a like and a comment and I shall see you in the next video.